Hi, everyone. Anthony Morganti here. You know, I receive a lot of feedback from photographers, particularly on applications that I do videos on. One of those applications is Luminar Neo, and I hear from photographers a lot that they're worried that Skylum Software will be replacing Luminar Neo with an entirely new application. And really, their fears are warranted because Skylum Software has done that in the past. A few years ago, they had an application called Luminar 4, and for several years, they supported and updated Luminar 4. Then they decided that they were going to totally replace Luminar 4 with a new app, Luminar AI, and your edits from Luminar 4 weren't compatible with Luminar AI. You had to run a conversion app to convert those edits to Luminar AI. Then, like a year later, they decided to totally replace Luminar AI with Luminar Neo, and again, your edits from Luminar AI weren't compatible with Luminar Neo, and they didn't immediately have available a conversion application. They did come out with one, but they did several months later. So a lot of people are worried that Luminar Neo is going to get replaced again. It's been about a year. Well, I'm happy to say they're not replacing Luminar Neo. They're actually adding to and building on the Luminar Neo platform. By the end of the year, there's going to be several new features. I'm going to mention them all in this video, and I'm going to be actually able to demo one of the new features because I have a beta version of a new feature that will be found in Luminar Neo. And this new feature actually will be available August 31st. The other features are coming again at the end of the year. Now, I'll talk about those other features at the end. I want to demo the new feature right now. Also, they've redone their pricing. They kind of simplified their pricing, and I'm not going to go over that. I don't want to make this a Luminar Neo commercial. But in the description below this video, I'll have a link to their website. You can check out their pricing uh, if you want to. Now, let's talk about this new feature that's going to be available August 31st. It's called Studio Light, and it actually is pretty cool. I have this image here. This is a stock photo, so this isn't an image that I took. And you can see it's right here under Essentials. Now, of course, I just have to say that I'm using a beta version of Studio Light, so it may perform differently, and it may have some different features when it is actually released. So let's open up Studio Light. Well, what exactly is it? Well, go to the amount slider and just take it and move it to the right. And you'll see that you get this kind of cool light pattern. And you notice it's just on the subject, on the model. Isn't that cool? So you could come in and you could, you know, add red to it or remove red from it, green and blue, of course. Any of these sliders just kind of change the look of the actual light that is falling on the model. So you could see how filter radius gives it a totally different, like, placement on her. Uh, filter EPS, similarly, will do the same kind of does the look, different look. You could add a texture to it, like a fireworks kind of look. You can see how it has some color added to it. There's a different fireworks look. You could go down and just try the different drop downs and see what they do. You also have different pattern. This is called dots. You can do strips. And you can see that that is more, I guess, longer looking. You could texture scale, so you can make them finer or thicker. You could change the angle as needed. So you could see how you can move these around, depth. And you could just change the exposure of the entire image. So you could bring the exposure down if you want to make it more like noticeable. So a lot of things. You could move the depth center. You could see it's sitting right here. You can move it around and you just will rearrange everything a little bit when you move that around. So that's pretty much what it is, and it's kind of cool, and I want to show you some other examples. And one feature about it that I stumbled into uh, that I think is kind of cool, actually. So let's just go to another image. Let's go to another uh, stock image. I want to show you, what you would, how you would use this on an image that is just really bright because the, lights, the light wouldn't be as noticeable on an image like this. So what you could do is when you go to Studio Light, is go down to the bottom exposure and just pull exposure down for everything. So it brings the exposure down for everything. Then go up to that amount slider and then you could move up the amount like that. And then, you know, if you don't like where maybe a light is hitting, just again, go to these sliders and kind of move them around or try a different pattern. Try strips, something like that. And let's um, go to scale. I want to make them kind of smaller something like this angle 
something like that. So you could see how you could uh, really have a high key image and still use the studio light on a high key image. Let's go to another one. Let's go to another just straight studio shot. Again, this is another stock image, not a photo I took. Um, let's again go to the studio light. Again, I'm going to pull exposure down. I chose this one because the lighting is perfect on the model. So the studio light is perfect. But if you want to add the effect, you could do it. You could see how you could add this kind of doppled effect on the model. Let's just quickly go to another one. It's an image that I took. Uh, this, I just wanted to show it because it's a black and white image. And I, if I do say so myself, I think the lighting is perfect on it. But again, I'll go to edit. I'll go to the studio light. And I'll take exposure down, and then I'll come in and put on some of these looks here. And you can try one of these other kind of options. Raise one, see what that looks like. Kind of plain, go to clouds, something like that. I don't know. So you can mess around. And finally, I want to show you what I stumbled upon. This is an image I took of who was my assistant at the time. Her name's Courtney. If I go over to edit, you notice that there's layers here. Uh, I actually have uh, the image of Courtney and I clipped her out and there's a background behind her. So what happened was I was just messing around with the studio light and I was on this image with the different layers. And unbeknownst to me, I happened to be clicked on the background a part of the image and I went to studio light and I took exposure down because it's kind of bright right and I noticed it's darkening the background then I pull the mount up and look at the lighting it's just going on the background it's not going on the top layer so this is layer specific so you could put it on layers and I thought that's pretty cool so now we're on Courtney here and we'll bring exposure for her down and then we could bring the studio light look up like that. So that I think is pretty cool uh, that it works with layers. So you could apply the lighting to uh, a background layer, foreground layer, a subject layer, an object layer, whatever you're able to do it here. So that studio light, again, that's going to be available at the end of the month. Now let's, let's quickly mention uh, some of the um, new features that will be coming by the end of the year from what I understand. They have a lot of new generative AI features. Uh, those of you familiar with Photoshop know that the beta version of Photoshop has these generative fill features. Well, they're coming to Luminar Neo and they're pretty cool. Um, now, I haven't seen them in action. I've just seen these photos that I'm going to be showing you, but hopefully they give me beta versions of this as well. And when they do, I definitely will do videos on it so you could see it before you decide to purchase it. Um, the first generative filter, uh, feature is called generative erase. And you can see here, and this is a photo, so I can't grab this bar and move it around, but you'll notice there's two vehicles and they're, you know, taking a photograph of an elephant walking across the dirt road. And you can see that to the right side here, they actually removed this vehicle. I would assume that if we move this bar, we're able to move it all the way to this side, that this vehicle would be removed as well. So this is generative erase. This will be a new feature that will be coming uh, by the end of the year. The next one is scene expand. You can see we have this square image of a hiker. She's on a uh, stone, you know, and wherever. And you're able then to expand it so that you have the um, entire scene kind of interpolated. Um, so that's kind of a new feature, and that, of course, is in the beta version of Photoshop as well. They have something called Scene Swap, where you could actually add things to a scene. Here you could see that they added a bee to the flower, so that's a new feature. The next one is Neon Glow. You could do a lot of different neon effects. You could do it around the edges of people, or you could add, like in this case, a triangle that is partly behind and partly in front of the model. Or you could do these things like at night and add this kind of neon ring going around the uh, model that is in the scene. So that is neon and glow. That one I don't think I would use uh, very much. I would use the generative erase and generative or scene expand features uh, myself. I don't know if I'd use scene swap, tell you the truth. I don't know if I want to add bees to my macros or stuff like that. 
I'd rather just try to capture them as is. But, you know, who knows? Maybe I would. Uh, next one is water enhancer. I could see a lot of landscape photographers using this or maybe travel photographers. All too often you're somewhere and you're never going to be there again and the water's brown, you know, and you could just, uh, you know, very quickly create or just make it blue with a uh, water enhancer. And there's a few different examples here. And you can see here, even just to pretty it up a little bit, you can see we have this kind of weird, I don't know, brownish looking water over here. And then, you know, we can make it blue and that's it. So those are some of the new features um, coming to Luminar Neo by the end of the year. And again, Studio Light, the one I actually demoed, that will be available August 31st. And again, uh, they simplified their pricing. i uh, have that linked in the description below this video. also have links to their website. You could read up more on these different features and see exactly what, um, what they do maybe a little better than I've demoed in this video. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.